Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode 3 of sound editing for visual media. We're gonna start by spotting a video. Spotting is the act of watching a video with the director or producer or editor of the video. Once you're hired on to do any kind of sound editing or scoring for a movie, you'll be meeting with the director either in real life or on Zoom or something like that, and you'll be going over the scenes of the movie talking a little bit about what's important. This is also your chance to take notes for yourself, so let's just get to it. All right, so here we are in Repo. We've already imported the film, did all the clericals that we needed to do, time code up here, all that stuff. Now, the first time I'm gonna spot a video, I'm gonna play the whole thing through. I can full screen my video, but I also have this new screen set. Still, most of my screen is occupied by the video. I see my regions and markers here, and I see a little bit of my timeline. So before I start, I'm gonna copy my video to track three called Ref, and then I'm gonna start playing. There are two things I'm doing when I'm spotting a video. The first thing is I want to mark the scene changes. Scene change is not to be confused with a uh, angle change, right? So if we look at this scene right here, See, that was an angle change, right? We're still in the same environment, just the camera angle change. Maybe time passed a little bit. What I am marking is essentially when the location of the scene changes. So we're coming up to this point where this dude's in the store and now he's in a bath and now he's back at the store. So I want to mark those. So to mark scene changes, I'm going to do split items at play cursor. So as a video playing with my item selected, anytime I press N, I will split that video. So I'm going to use N whenever a scene changes and I'm going to press M whenever I want to place a marker. Now I may want to place a marker whenever I have a question from the director. I also want to place a marker on the most important kind of climactic scenes of the movie. Those are the spots I would get to first. So if I'm working on kind of a drama movie and there's one fight scene, I'm going to start working on the fight scene and then whatever time I have left, I will spend on the rest of the movie. So I'm placing markers for the climactic scenes whenever I have a question and whenever I want to make a note to myself. The video we're watching is a movie called Chime Me Again. So so let's play it. So the movie is four and a half minutes long, so I'm gonna fast forward through this bit. I am just placing markers where I have a question and I'm splitting the item wherever a scene changes. That's all I'm doing. All right, so we watched the video and now as you can see, I got a bunch of markers and I got a bunch of cuts on my video. So the first thing I'm gonna do since I got the director with me, I'm just gonna go from marker to marker and I'm just gonna, you know, ask my question. So I'd be asking the director, what kind of music do you want for this part? I also put this marker for myself because I now need to go find a bunch of chime sounds, right? So I may have some chimes in my orchestral library but this is a smaller chime so again I can edit those sounds a little bit so let's go to the next scene this is a note to self I need to find a sound that works right so if I'm doing foley I don't really have a metal sheet to walk on so I need to go do some field foley possibly for this scene I can also design a sound or find it from my library so again note to self next marker now this one is very important you need to be having a conversation about this with your filmmaker obviously during this whole scene she's up there right but as the audience maybe our attention is not on her right maybe some people would spot it right away but most people are just kind of staring at this couple they're not really paying attention to her she starts poking her head out from here on out we're supposed to see her so the real question is when do we want to reveal? If I'm making music for this scene, my question to the director here would be, when would you like the reveal to happen? If I'm putting some kind of creepy music here, do I start it here? Do I start it at the beginning? Or do we want to just completely ignore it, right? That may be the director's preference. So I would ask them and they would say, you know, oh yeah, in the first few seconds of this scene, if somebody spots them, let that be like a little reward for them. We're only going to acknowledge it at this point. And the rest of the spotting session goes like that. We talk to the director a little bit, make notes for ourselves in our markers. So wherever we discuss sound effects, I'm gonna name my marker SFXQ. And whenever we talk about music, name my marker MXQ. So I'll tell you what SFXQ and MXQ is. Q obviously stands for Q. The color changes automatically. That's because I have these settings on auto color icon and layout. I've already made a video about this section of SWS in detail. So I'll put the link up here. But as you can see, I have a few marker types. I have the SFX cue, that's a cue for SFX. So that's a note to myself to edit that part first or to go record something for that part. Then I have MX cue and that's a musical cue. So again, if I'm making music, those are the parts I will start with. And then I have these SFX F, MX F, DX F. And these are fixes. F stands for fix in these ones. That's after I've done some editing. And let's say I did some editing. I wrote some music here and the director goes, I like the overall music, but it's a little bit slow. So if they say something like that, I'm going to go Alt and M and I'm 
I'm going to go MXF too slow. So then I know that I have a music fix here after I did my first editing, right? So these are just the director notes and then I can go through them. And then I have dialogue fix and SFX fix for the same thing. Oh, we didn't like this door sound, put a fix there. And they're all automatically colored. So if I'm working only on, for example, music cues, I can sort by color. And now I just go through my music cues one by one and I compose them. Say bye to the director. Now you're going to start editing. So the next thing I would do once I have all my cues in place, now my numbers are all out of whack. So what I can do, I have this command up here called markers. Renumber all markers in timeline order. I hit it and then I can go between my markers and my last marker is 11. I also made cuts to the film. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bring this up to the correct frame. 3109 we're here, 3110 we're back here. So this is my first cut. And then I'm going to do the same for other cuts. I'm going to move my splits exactly between two scene changes on the correct frame. And I'm going to just leave it there and I'm going to rinse and repeat for all the scenes. All right. So now I have all these split items. So I'm gonna select all of them, create regions with tail from selected items. I have automatically created regions from each scene. So I'm gonna name my scenes, scene one, thrift store, interior. Then I wanna go to the next one, bath, dream sequence. And I'm gonna rinse and repeat for the rest of the movie, name each scene correctly. So now that I got that, I can alternatively give similar scenes the same color. So I'm going to select all the thrift store interiors, make them all really yellow. Give similar colors to the same scenes to use for reference later. So now if I zoom out, I got all my scenes here so I can select any scene. So now I'm going to come and select these items again and I go rename selected items from regions. And I'm going to also run this script color selected items from region in their middle position. And now I have these scenes and they're all named based on the regions that we put there and they're colored based on the regions that we colored. So I'm going to move them a little further ahead in the project, place a marker there. I have my scenes for reference over here as well. So if I want to just work on the bath scene, copy it to my reference and then keep working on that scene. So if I want to navigate from marker to marker, each number takes me to that marker. 10 is zero. And I put 11 to 20 on control and that number. So 11 is control and one, control and two is 12. So that's pretty nice. And if I want to select regions, I can assign hotkeys to that. Or my favorite way is to go J, which brings us here. Go R and one. Now I'm at region one. J R three. I'm at region three or I can just double click them. So now I can quickly navigate between my scenes. So I hope you understand how important spotting is and keeping your project organized and regions and markers to be able to navigate quickly. And, you know, bear in mind that this movie is four minutes long. If you're working on a 90 minutes long feature film, just trying to find your way around the film without doing this could take up so much time. And by having this kind of quick roadmap, you can navigate between your scenes better. So it's really important to do spotting so that's it for today and we'll get right to sound design next week if you don't know each of these videos comes with a blog post which is on my website i'll put a link in the description and there you can download some of my commands and toolbars and things like that and there i'll also tell you some places where you can find a video that you can sound edit yourself you got to make sure that you're not working on copyrighted material because you won't be able to publish them if you're just practicing i guess work on whatever you want and in my blog post i will also talk about what would be a suitable first video so i'll see you next week Bye bye